Some people lament the fact that modern life relies on electricity so much. They seem to think we should go back to burning wood and gas stoves. But electricity is a wonderfully clean technology. No smoke, no fumes, no nasty chemicals. You can cook, heat, light, communicate with it cleanly and safely. The only problem is that you can't take enough electricity to, say, cook breakfast on when you're in the middle of nowhere. Or can you? With a solar generator set like the Jackery Explorer 1000 and Solar Saga 100, you absolutely can enjoy safe, clean, green energy anywhere. Join me, James Bruce, with MUO MakeUseOf.com as I take a closer look at the new Jackery 1000 Solar Generator Bundle Set, a complete off-grid clean energy supply. So some people take issue with these type of products being called solar generators because most of the ones that you find labeled as such aren't actually solar uh, or even generators at all. They're just big batteries. But in this case, the Jackery Solar Generator 1000 is actually a bundle consisting of the Explorer 1000 battery pack and two Solar Saga uh, 100 solar panels. So I think in this case, the name is actually justified. But to be pedantic, the Explorer 1000 by itself is not a solar generator in that it doesn't have built-in panels. Uh, in fact, you can charge it with a regular wall socket AC adapter uh, or even a wind turbine, anything that generates a decent enough DC output. It also doesn't generate power in the sense that a diesel generator turns liquid petrol into electrical energy. Instead, it's a massive lithium ion battery storage, which keeps the electricity that's either been generated by a solar panel or simply fed into it from the wall for use later. However, it's called a generator because the end product is much like a backup generator. You get a pure sine wave AC output to power various household goods as well as other voltages. But having said that, if the power's low and you have full sun, it can be used as a converter in that you can simultaneously feed and draw down from the battery at the same time. However, you shouldn't do that too often. Jackery doesn't recommend it, so don't try and use this as an uninterruptible power supply, as it is the lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide or NMC battery cells are rated to 500 cycles, which is less than the more expensive lithium iron phosphate cells, but still a reasonable lifespan. What that means is that after 500 full charge and discharge cycles, the battery capacity will have degraded to 80%. So even if you used it every single day as a full cycle, that would still be one and a half years at full capacity. Then as the battery degraded, it would still work, of course, it just wouldn't hold as much charge as before. Okay, let's talk output numbers because they're definitely above average compared to similarly specced batteries. As the name would suggest, the Explorer 1000 uh, relates to the storage capacity, which is 1000 watt hours. Now that means you could in theory run a 1000 watt device such as an electric grill or pressure cooker for one hour. A 100 watt device could run for 10 hours or a one watt device could theoretically run for a thousand hours. It also has an impressive continuous output of 1000 watts maximum and a 2000 watt peak. So while that isn't enough for a full size kettle, 1000 watts is more than enough for most household appliances uh, and even some power tools. Now that's made available uh, via two AC ports on the UK model, though I believe the US model has three just because the ports themselves are physically smaller. I tested the continuous power output and overall battery capacity using a 1000 watt rated heater. It should have stayed powered for just under an hour uh, given the conversion inefficiencies, the power loss to the fans and heat, etc. And sure enough, it lasted exactly 55 minutes. In fact, just as I turned the camera on at the 55 minute mark to film its exhaustion, uh, the battery immediately died. So this is a verifiable way of testing the overall capacity. The problem with other appliances is that they often uh, vary with their power usage. The hot plate, for instance, doesn't draw a constant however many watts. Uh, it varies, so it's difficult to use something like that to verify and say this battery will last you X hours for a specific device. In fact, it'll last you for a thousand watt hours, and that will vary significantly depending on what you plug into it. It's also worth noting that at full thousand watt output, the noise level I measured is around 60 decibels. Now that's not hugely accurate. It was just from a phone app, but I would say it was noisy enough that if I was trying to run a movie night outdoors with a home cinema projector, it would certainly be annoying. 
So the space heater on half power is basically the limit of what this Explorer 1000 can handle. It will briefly power higher rated appliances, but only very briefly uh, in case things are surging before they settle down. We're talking about a matter of seconds here rather than minutes or hours, but you can't sustain more than a thousand watts for continuous usage. So think of travel kettle rather than household full-size kettle. Think induction hob rather than microwave oven. Now I did actually test it with that space heater turned up to full power, which briefly drew 2,400 watts. Uh, not for long though, because the Jackery strode a warning sign on the LCD and then promptly cut off after about a few seconds. I don't suggest trying that sort of thing on a regular basis. However, do know that if you do accidentally plug in too much or it surges too high, it won't blow up. It does have protection against over discharge as well as protection for overcharge and battery management circuits, of course. One thing I will note, however, is that the display is uh, the last generation LCD display here. For US buyers, you'll find the newer generation Explorer 1500 model which has a nicer display, or most notably it's one that has an estimated power remaining time on it. So on this model you will need to sort of roughly judge that for yourself, do the sums in your head. But if you want to check out the new Explorer 1500 model, our own US reviewer Matt Hall took a look at that last month. So do check that out if you need something slightly larger capacity, uh, then it's well worth having a look. As for the other outputs, you'll also find two USB-C and two USB-A quick charge 3.0 ports. However, these are limited to 18 watts, not the full power delivery spec of 60 watts. There's also a regulated 12 volt 10 amp car port, but no other 12 volt outputs, just that one. It doesn't have a wireless Qi charger on the top either, which I think is a bit of a missed trick. They could have made a nice little smartphone charging tray there. I don't think it would have added a lot of weight. Um, in return for a lot of convenience. However, there is a small emergency light on the side. Again, it's nothing impressive. Uh, I think in an emergency situation, you don't need thousands of lumens of light. Activating any of the outputs requires only a single quick button press, which is convenient compared to long holding the power button, then long holding either AC or DC button, as you do on other devices. However, it could also be a source of frustration if you pack the device away. It's very easy to accidentally press the buttons and then have the power draining while it's in storage. Measuring a very compact 13.1 by 9.2 by 11.1 .1 inches, it also weighs 22 pounds or 10 kilograms. It's really quite lightweight in comparison to other batteries that I've tested. And for me, it sits in a sweet spot between massive capacity and light enough to still carry around comfortably. The shell of the Explorer 1000 is a hard ABS plastic in a distinctive dark grey and orange. It's not ruggedized, nor is it waterproof, so don't throw it off a cliff, don't shoot it, don't throw it in a lake. Uh, that said, it's clearly not delicate by any means. This is designed to be used outdoors, so putting it down on a rock or accidentally knocking it over certainly isn't going to destroy it. Now on the input side, interestingly, you have both an 8mm DC in and an Anderson port, which is yet another standard suitable for higher powered DC cabling, and you find it mainly on Jackery and Goal Zero products. If you have a full-size MC4 solar connector, then you can find adapters readily online. However, one is not included in the box, so that's something you'll want to pick up ahead of time to avoid disappointment if you're going to be using that on your next wilderness trip. The two Solar Saga 100 panels included in this set are also available separately, but you'll save around $100, hundred pounds off of the separate retail price uh, if you purchase in a bundle. They're also very impressive compared to other portable panels that I've tried, and it's all down to the design. So first off, they're a lot more solid with an ABS frame around the handle, and they fold in half to this relatively compact form, a sort of small tabletop size. The fact that they're built into a solid frame uh, really helps with the overall durability, although there is still a fabric backing on the panels themselves. The edges, however, aren't going to fray, and unlike the four panel fold-out designs, there's less chance of shearing forces when you unfold it all, because you can grab both sides. And with a four panel design, uh, they're a bit more flexible so you end up with excess strain sort of in the middle when you try and pick it up. Another clever feature I like is the magnetic clasps so you don't need to fiddle with fabric straps that you'll find on other generic portable panels, it just snaps shut. 
It's a small feature, but on something like this, it makes all the difference when it comes to setup and teardown times. Now on the rear, there's some rigid flaps which you can pull out to angle it correctly. And here also is a very small uh, design feature that I'd like to point out. The strap is actually secured in three places. And that means that when it comes to folding it back again, the strap doesn't drop out and get caught in the Velcro which would then stop it from sticking as I've found on other panels. Again, such a small design feature, but one that really helps to differentiate it on a pretty crowded market. So the Solar Saga 100 connect in parallel to your Jackery Explorer 1000 using this Anderson Y splitter adapter which takes the 8mm DC output from the panels uh, and connects them both together and then goes into the Anderson socket on the battery. Like the battery, these panels are not waterproof, nor should you bend them more than 30 degrees. I wouldn't call the panels ruggedized as such, but like I say, it has that strong ABS uh, plastic handle and should prevent major damage if you were to drop them from a small height. Ultimately, they should be harder wearing than more flexible products. With a 23% efficiency rating, these are among the best portable panels you'll find. And obviously, while the charging time depends on your location and cloud coverage, etc., the temperature, any number of factors, generally a full day or eight hours of sun from both panels should completely charge this battery. And this pretty much lined up with my experience. Having drained the battery, we put it out at 9 a.m. Uh, once the sun was up and by evening it was charged. Now that was on an average sort of sunny British day, so not particularly intense sun. Uh, but not cloudy either. At midday, I was registering about 125 watts from the two panels. And while these are certainly better than the 120 watt panel I was comparing them to, uh, which only registered at 65 watts, it is worth noting that they weren't operating at peak. Obviously, two times 100 watts should give you a theoretical maximum of 200 watts. But in practice, it was more like 120, 130 watts. I did confirm that both of the panels were operating normally in the 90 to 100 watt range individually on both this battery and others I tried it with, so those aren't at fault. However, for some reason, when combined, they were limited to, as I say, 120, 130 watts. I checked in with support on this, and apparently it has to do with the current limit on the unit and the voltage of the panels. So the Jackery Explorer 1000 is limited to 7.5 amps on the input, while the panels operate at 18 volts. So the absolute maximum is only ever going to be up to 135 watts. Now to me, this seems a little mismatched. So the Explorer 1000 itself is actually rated to up to 30 volts, 7.5 amps. If you are going to add your own panels, either something static or some other portable flexible one that you've purchased, do be sure to check the output rating first, that it won't exceed seven and a half or 30, uh, seven and a half amps or 30 volts. It's only by connecting these two Solar Saga 100 in parallel that they can be used on this. If you were to make your own custom adapter and plug them in series, it wouldn't work because the voltage would exceed 30 volts. Now on this device, you can't plug in four of the panels even if you wanted to, nor could you hook it up to one of those uh, super high efficiency newer static panels, the 300 watts or 380 watt ones. If you do want something that can theoretically be charged quicker than a single day of sunshine, you'll need to look elsewhere. However, one other very useful feature of these panels that I wanted to point out is that in addition to the standard charging output for your battery pack, you also have a USB-A, and USB-C port for charging mobile devices without going through the battery. Now these run at five volt, two and a half uh, amps maximum. So of course this slightly reduces the overall charge going into your battery if you're using it to charge your smartphone simultaneously. But it does mean you're making a more efficient use of the energy generated. The thing about batteries and charge controllers generally is that each time you store or convert energy, there's always going to be a little bit lost to inefficiencies. The Explorer 1000 features an MPPT controller to make the best use of the charge it does get from solar, but even so, it's maybe 5% lost each time you convert. So the power goes in here, converts, uh, let's say 95% of it is then stored, but because it's not stored at 5 volts, when you need to put that into your mobile device, there's another 5% lost in the conversion down to 5 volts. This isn't unique to the Jackery by any means, of course. This is just true of any sort of battery or conversion. 
So the ability to charge tablets and smartphones over USB directly from the panels is absolutely a killer feature here that really helps you to make most efficient use of the free solar power. So all of these little design features and panel characteristics taken in isolation uh, would not be enough to justify the premium cost of the Solar Saga compared to other models on the market. But when all of these design points are taken as a whole, uh, and then you consider that you're saving when buying it in a bundle anyway, it definitely makes these worthwhile. There's a lot of great but individually small reasons why I would consider the Solar Saga 100 to be the best portable solar panels around. So, should you buy the Jackery Solar Generator 1000 set? Overall, the Explorer 1000 performs well. It does what it says on the box. It's well designed and it hits a sweet spot between ultra portable 500 watt hour batteries that just can't power AC devices for particularly long uh, and larger 2000 watt hour batteries or more that are just too heavy to lug around if you're not bringing a vehicle directly up to the site. So whether you're camping for a weekend break or just decided to live in a tiny home off-grid to reduce your impact on the world, this feels like the Goldilocks size of battery. And combined with the Solar Saga panels, which are also superb, you have a full charge possible in a day or less. The USB ports on the panels are great for charging small smart devices uh, without having to waste energy on the conversion process or using the simultaneously discharge uh, features on the Explorer 1000 itself. After all, while you might have multiple small devices to charge throughout the day, the chances are it'll only be once or twice a day that you need to uh, discharge the AC for cooking or heating. The hard plastic frame, the bifold design and the magnetic clasp are all small features that I really appreciated. On the downside, the Explorer 1000 lacks any bells and whistles found on other devices. It does one job and it does that well. It does have a small flashlight, but not nearly as large as some emergency power batteries have built in. So you wouldn't use it to light your whole six person tent and it probably won't signal to mountain rescue. The SOS pattern is, well, wrong. It's just SOSO repeated. In addition, it doesn't have a Bluetooth speaker. I mean, arguably, why would it? It's a solar battery pack, not party power pack. But I mention it because there are devices like that on the market. And if you wanted something a little more all in one, so you could cut down on the amount of stuff you have to carry, then this isn't it. You will still need a Bluetooth speaker. Well, I say need. And you'll also need a camping light of some sort. It also can't be daisy chained for additional power, though in fairness that's pretty rare on these type of devices and the internal battery cannot be swapped. Again, not particularly common on these kind of things, but perhaps a point to consider in the age of right to repair. Swappable internal batteries are something we're starting to see more of on the market and I suspect if you wait another year, Jackery will likely have their own version of a swappable battery unit. For a detailed teardown of the Explorer 1000, check out a channel called Lithium Solar that I've linked to in the video uh, description down below, where he rips one open and you can see the type of cells and quality of components. To my admittedly non-electrical engineer eye, it looks really well made. The manufacturing quality, the solder joints, etc., look clean, uh, but that's not something I'm qualified to do, so I'm not going to take this one apart. In terms of price and value, it is a little bit more premium than other units that you'll find, but it's clear that you're paying for better quality components and higher efficiency, both from the panels and the lightweight battery. Now, although I've not had cause to contact support for the product, many reviewers also note that Jackery generally has far better product support than other brands. They may be made in China, but the company has support in the US, so you're much more likely to get problems dealt with uh, in a timely manner. Anyway, that's it from me. Thank you to Jackery for providing this review, and thank you to you for watching. If you found this review helpful, please do hit the like button and ask away in the comments uh, if you have any questions that you think I didn't answer in this review, and then I'll do my best to answer those. Also consider subscribing for more daily tech news, gadget reviews, giveaways, tech tutorials, uh, and more from all of us at muomakeuseof.com. Until next time.